Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Ask Amy. Amy Davis here, Andrea Sladen, our producer, investigative projects producer. We're talking this week about the heat because really what else is there to talk about? It is so hot outside. Yeah, it is hot. We've already started getting emails from people about their electric bills. I know mine, I can tell that, that we're in the thick of the summer months because mine was $351 this last month. Um, you've got some things going on with your plan. So you're like, I'm kind of lucky right now. I'm switching providers. Not too bad. I mean, it was still in the 200s, but not a shocker yeah, price. Yeah, for this time of year. Yeah. So people this time of year are, I mean, you got to stay cool. You don't want your house feeling like, you know, 80 degrees. You want to be able to go in and cool down. But, you know, when you use your AC, it costs a lot more money to heat your home, um, to get it down. When it's 100 degrees outside and you're trying to lower the temperature down to even 75, that takes a lot more energy to do it. So we want to dedicate this whole episode to things you can do, practical things you can do in your home to make your energy usage, to cut your energy usage, to make your HVAC run more efficiently and save money while you stay cool. Yeah. All right, so practical tips. We're going to jump right in. I'm going to let you start with the laundry room. Um, maybe you've heard some of these. Maybe you haven't. We'll start there. Okay, so laundry. First of all, I only do my laundry when it's hot, either like before the sun comes up or in at the nighttime yeah. just to kind of – so it's not so hot outside. Like maybe so. run a load even overnight, like when everybody's going to bed? Yeah. Okay. Um, but whenever you switch the laundry, instead of washing it on hot, we always wash on cold now in our house. And that actually has saved some money, I think. Yeah, me as well. And so Consumer Reports actually did a whole thing on this several years ago, you know, tested the whole theory of if you use the other cycles on your washing machine or the other temperatures, hot or warm or cold, does it make a difference? And Consumer Reports says no, that you can wash everything in cold. And that will save some electricity not having to heat up that water and send it to your through your washing machine. Wash everything on cold. That's a good tip. Yeah. Um, you did a whole story for us um, last August on ways to save money. And one of the things that you came up with, did you ever follow through on that? Where you air dry your clothes, you hang them to dry. Okay. I hang the towels okay. and sheets to dry. Because uh-huh. whenever you hang them to dry, you know, they are not as soft. <laughs> right. But they will dry out in this humidity in like an hour. You know, oh, they're, really? They're dry. Okay. As opposed to the dryer, which... My dryer, I don't have a brand new dryer. So uh-huh. my dryer would take, you know, Quite a, while, a, while. a few cycles. So what I do is I hang them and then they dry and then I'll put them in the dryer for like a quick little fluff. Oh, okay. So, so maybe they don't feel quite so crunchy when they yeah. followed up by putting them in there just to tumble them. And yeah. finish them off. Okay, that's a good tip. Um, and you can find these things sort of all over the internet where they say, oh, it'll save this amount of money. We're not going to throw those numbers out there because depending on what year you saw it or, you know, the Department of Energy, just know that all of these are things that can save you money on your electric bill. So if you do four or five of them, mm. you know, you should see your savings come down. Um, okay, so what do you usually leave your thermostat on in your home when you're there? Okay, when I'm there, we have a constant um, debate in our house because my husband wants it hotter than I want it. <laughs> so he has it set, but then every once in a while when I walk by, I'll beep, beep, right. you know, <laughs> knock it down a few. So when I'm home, I like it to be 70. Wow, that's cold. Is that cold? I mean, that's cold for me. We have a one-story house. Uh-huh. In my defense, we okay. have a one-story house. So and it heat up quicker maybe than a than a bottom floor on a two-story right yeah and actually a few years ago my husband had extra outlets cut in our in our living room Uh we have high ceilings and so we had extra holes cut in he had the air conditioner company come out and do that so the air flows better throughout our house oh like vent extra vents that's the word so that i feel like has saved us and helped the air move around more because i guess in some of these older homes you know it doesn't. So moving through that quickly, I mean, so normally 74 in our house, Ooh. 73 at night, maybe, but sometimes we sleep with it on 74 and with ceiling fans. But people want to know when you leave your home, people say like, oh, well, you shouldn't turn it way up to like 78 because then it's going to work so much harder to bring it back down to the temperature that you want. Okay, so general rule of thumb, and this is sort of advice um, from Department of Energy and also from HVAC experts that if you bump it up four degrees higher than what you want it to be when you're home, it should be fine. So if when I'm home, I have it at 74, when I'm away for four or more hours, turn it up to 78. 
And if you've got a smart thermostat, you can set it to do that, to kind of get to know your schedule. Like every day, if I'm coming home at like two o'clock in the afternoon, so I say beginning at about 1.30, I want it to start lowering back down so that it doesn't feel like a hot box when I walk into my house. So you're saying if you set it too high when you leave, thinking you're saving money, you might actually cost you more because it has to go cool back down whenever you turn it down. So that is the gen. Uh, that's what some people think. That's what my mom thinks, and that's mm -hmm. what some people think. And it could be true if you're setting it so high above, and and then you're asking every day for it to cool that temperature. So if you're putting it on 85 every day, and then you're coming back home and you're expecting it to cool it back down to 74, in your case 70, yeah, it's gonna run and run and run to work that hard. But if you're only bumping it up four degrees over what you mm -hmm. want it and you're leaving it at that temperature if you're away for four or more hours. That's sort of a rule of thumb. It's called the four by four principle, right? So that works. And then we checked into last year, we got a, um, an email from somebody saying, but won't that, if I bump it up too high, the temperature could not cause like mold to grow in my home. So say you go out of town on vacation and you wanna turn off your AC. They wanna know if that's a problem. Do you remember what you found on that in that case? Well, let's see. Because you did, you actually checked with, um, you checked with Abacus Plumbing and, and an electrician there who basically told you that is true that mold could grow if it's so high, but he said it's safe to set the thermostat 50 to 20 degrees um, below the high temperatures outside. So if it's 100 degrees outside and you have your thermostat on 80 or 85, he said that's okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, this well, is when you're away for, a, for yeah. long periods of time. Like on you know, vacation or something. Yeah, like you're yeah. going on vacation. So you really don't have to worry about that. Okay, so we're already, man, this is this segment's going to be long. I'm sorry, I'm timing us over here. So your husband does something every year I didn't hear about, but but you, he says it makes your AC work better in so, the summer. So he, the other day, he was like, oh, the air conditioner's not cooling down as much. I got to go outside and wash, wash the outside of the air conditioner, the actual box outside. So he went outside um, with the water hose and washed off all the, you know, the air conditioning box that's outside. Yeah. And um, he swears it helped, it runs more efficiently now and cools off better. Yeah. I'm not sure. I think it was just a little cooler the next few days, but right. hey, if he wants to wash it, why not? Right. And so I did check with okay. an HVAC person, <laughs> uh, so the person that I use, and I asked him if that, if that works. And he said, yeah, you should just get out there like once a year, spray it down with a hose, make sure you get all the dust and clear all the leaves out of it so that, you know, it can vent and run efficiently like so your husband uses a degreaser mm -hmm. and he said you know if you get any of like a buildup or something in the mm -hmm. coils you could use that but he said you don't even necessarily have to mm -hmm. but i mean it's better than what i was doing i've never gone out there with a water hose and sprayed mine off mm -hmm. so this is good information yeah all right so um we want to talk about um smart thermostats um Let's talk about those real quick because a lot of people, maybe you have one and you're not using it right, or maybe you've been hesitant to put one in because you think the only thing that will happen is the electric company is going to change your thermostat when you don't want them to. Mm -hmm. So we actually got this call. It turned out to be a really interesting story from a man, um, Rick O'Loughlin, I believe, last summer, who noticed this happening to him. We want you to, to watch his story so you can see what happened in his case when he put in a smart thermostat. Rick O'Loughlin relies on fans to keep his Bear Creek home cool. He does his part to conserve energy by setting his thermostat to a warm 80 degrees. As long as I keep the air moving, I'm comfortable. But one day in May, he noticed During a difference, and so did his four-legged roommates. And the dogs came in, and they sat for a minute, and they were still, they were panting, and I'm sweating. When Rick checked his thermostat, it was set to 84 degrees. He adjusted it back down, and then it went back up, the same day and on another day when Rick wasn't even home. And I went, this is crazy. A call to his retail electric provider, Tri Eagle, revealed Rick agreed to let the company adjust his thermostat when he installed this free smart thermostat they mailed him last year. I do like the idea of a smart house. And I thought, oh, a smart thermostat, what a great thing. Anywhere in the world, I can go and see what the temperature is in the house. I can control it. 
he didn't know TriEagle could also control it. And when we started asking questions, we learned if you sign up for any electric provider's demand response program, they can adjust your thermostat anytime, even if there are no energy alerts from ERCOT. ERCOT told us it hasn't issued an energy alert day since February of 2021. But a TriEagle representative told us the company can issue them independently and as frequently as they want. And TriEagle has curtailed the electricity of its customers often this year. It was hot, muggy. I mean, obviously the humidity was coming in. When Rick called TriEagle, they couldn't tell him or us how the company decides to adjust thermostats or by how many degrees. But TriEagle said customers can opt out of its demand response program at any time. It was pretty miserable. All right, so the biggest takeaway here, O'Loughlin did actually um, opt out of that program after our story when he found out he could do that. And the biggest takeaway is that you do have to give the electric company consent to be able to control your smart thermostat. You just want to be careful that you're not giving them consent unknowingly, like in his case. So, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, whenever we come back, we're going to take a look at the most common AC issues that homeowners in Houston have this time of year and what you can do to fix the problem that can save you a lot of money. It's a DIY tip. Okay. We'll be right back. Welcome back to this episode of Ask Amy. We're talking about heat, how to save money on your electric bill, use less energy at home. And I wanted to talk about how busy it is for AC repair companies this time of year. They're busy because everybody's air conditioners are going out because they're working overtime. So we did a story several years ago um, when we discovered that one of the number one calls, one of the number one reasons that people's ACs stop cooling is their capacitor goes out. It's a small part you can replace it yourself. And when we did this story at a whole lot of HVAC companies, it got really upset with me, but it was an HVAC professional, owner of a company, Bodensteiner Services, um, that actually services my AC, that told us how you can do this yourself. And we wanna let you watch the story because it sort of speaks for itself. So it's not necessarily how it appears. Blair Bodensteiner probably replaces more AC capacitors a day, then most moms change diapers. Sometimes I'll do seven before 11. So many, Bodensteiner can make the repair in about five minutes. It is quite simple. You just have to take the proper steps to make sure it's done correctly. He agreed to walk us through the steps so you can do it too. First, how to know if you need a new capacitor. The fan is not spinning outside, but the unit's running. You might hear a hum coming from your AC outside. It's on in your home, but the air coming out isn't cool. First step, open up the cover on your AC unit. This small canister mounted inside is the capacitor. Another sign it's gone out. If you look at the top of the can, it's slightly raised. The top of the can should be flat like this one. You can buy a new capacitor at an AC supply store or online for about $20 to $40. Hiring an HVAC company. Well, I've seen invoices from uh, different companies where they charge $750 for the part, which is ridiculous. Look at the numbers on your old capacitor and buy one with the same capacitor voltage rating. Just make sure the numbers match. Turn off your thermostat. So simply you pull this out. Turn off the power to your AC and make sure it's not holding a charge. So basically we're checking the voltage. A $20 voltmeter can test that for you. A capacitor has three connectors on top, three spots where you'll attach wires. See the prongs or terminals on each connector? On Click to Houston, we'll explain which wires to attach to which connectors. But you can also snap a picture of the connected wires before you remove the old capacitor and use that as a reference to put it back together. They're pretty easy, huh? Yeah, there's nothing to it. You want to make sure that they're tight. Put the capacitor back in place, replace the cover, and chill out in your cool home, knowing you just saved hundreds of dollars. Okay, some big takeaways here. You might not be comfortable changing that capacitor yourself. Um, I'm personally not, even though we did the story on how you can do it. But you can go and buy the capacitor. You can look at the model numbers that you need. It's on your AC now. And you can buy them. I saw them on Amazon, or you could go to any sort of... Um, AC supply store and they're usually between 20 and 40 bucks. Buy one or two or three the first time you have to buy one to have them on hand. And if you do have to call an AC repair company, you can say, I already have the capacitor. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. And can you just charge me to replace it? It takes them less than 10 minutes to replace that part. So basically you're paying for a service call. 
That's great. Anyway, okay. So that information, we're going to put all this information for you in our show notes, um, by the way. But you had some other good tips when you researched this sort of last August on yeah. ways to save. Yeah, we were saying, you know, we always, you always hear you could save a little money here and a little money there on these little things you do in your home. But we were saying, hey, that could really add up. I mean, if you save $3 every month and then on 10 things, I mean, it's yeah, a lot of money. Right. So we started looking at the little things you could do to save money on your energy costs in your home that could add up. And so first, um, we talked about doing the dishes. Well, with my kids home during the summer, I'm literally doing a load of laundry a day. I mean, of dishes, dishes a day. I don't love it, but I am. <laughs> so I started on after doing the story, it was like, don't use the dryer cycle. The dryer on the dishwasher just sucks a ton of energy. So yeah. what I do is I do the quick wash and then open it and just kind of pull the racks out a little and just let it air dry. Oh. So never and use the dryer. That's a good tip. And you know, I got to tell you, like even mine, when I use the air dry, all the plastics are all still wet. Uh -huh. So I always pull it out to dry anyway. So, yeah. and we did this story and I haven't turned off the dry cycle. I need to do that. Yeah. It'll save you money. And then we talked about, think about your oven use. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when you turn on that oven, you're heating up not just the oven, but probably half your kitchen. You know how hot it gets in there. Right. So think about those, all those devices you probably have, the air fryer or, you know, these small little oven things you can use instead a crock pot. Yeah, how much less energy they use than your oven. So even if you maybe plan your meals around using that twice a week, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you, of course, I love crock pot meals. Yeah. Because they're done when you get home. Right. So your husband, obviously, he's very handy, um, built something, like came up with something in your home that also helps you guys with yeah. heat. So have you ever been in the attic this time of year? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's hot. Horrible. And a lot of homes, you know, whenever you pull the attic down, I mean, it's just right there. So what he built was an attic tent. You can buy these at Home Depot on uh -huh. Amazon. You're going to pay 50 to $300 for one. But basically what it is is like a, imagine like half of a box. And I took a video of it uh -huh. at our house. Um, it Whenever you open up the attic and you look up, it's going to be covered with like a box top sort of thing. Uh -huh. And it insulates the hot air coming down and heating up your home and the cool air going up and getting wasted up through your attic. Yeah, because you don't need to cool your attic, but you want right. to keep that heat up there, not seeping down into your right. home. So he bought insulation board, which is basically like a thick poster board, uh -huh. $20 for a big sheet of it. And he cut it to the size of that opening and huh. then cocked it oh. together. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's a DIY one. It probably costs 20 bucks to make. Uh -huh. But like I said, if you want to buy one, they're on... All the, all the websites made out of different things. Right. But the cheat version would be that. And I can tell a difference. I mean, I don't have like the official reading of how it helps with the thermostat. Really? Uh -huh. But I can tell a difference in just being in that area. Yeah. You can feel whenever you pull it down and you're not hit with a wave of hot air. Uh, yeah. Because it's blocking it from being Right. Sent That's down. very handy. Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't done that as well. <clears throat> but I mean, obviously, you know, if you've got an attic like anywhere near your attic, it's you can feel the heat sort of coming down. Mm -hmm. So that's a good tip. Something that you can do yourself. Um, so when you get in your car these days, it is not pleasant. I mean, sort of, and I'm, I'm um, bad about, I don't have one of those things, the shades in my front windshield. Yeah. Obviously, you need one of those to, to help so that it's not 140 degrees when you get in your car. But when we come back, we're going to talk to you about ways that you can cool your car down quickly. Everybody's got different theories, like that recirculate button, roll down your windows, do this, do that. I don't know if you've got a method, but we'll discuss that and the five things you do to cool your car down quickly. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You know that feeling in the summertime when you go to get in your car after you've been working all day or you've been inside a store and your car's just been sitting out in a parking lot baking, right? It gets so hot inside a vehicle. We've seen people bake cookies uh -huh. inside vehicles or maybe it's on top of the cars. Anyway, it's hot. And so... Everybody has this theory about how can you get it to cool down the fastest when you get in. Like some people say you have to hit that recirculate button and that helps. And other people say, oh, you roll down the windows, but only these or only those. I don't know if there's if you've ever thought that there's a certain method of what you do. I, I just crank it up and <laughs> wait. Usually. Which Yeah, which may be the right thing. But Consumer Reports actually did look into this. They tested it. And so then they came up with these steps of exactly what works best to cool your car down fast. Yeah. And they basically say your air conditioner is going to work the best if the car is actually moving. So you should get in and turn on the car and turn on the AC and get moving, though. And drive. 
crank up the fan when you start driving and open just the rear windows for 10 to 20 seconds. This forces all of the hot air out of your car. Keep the temperature on the coldest setting and just adjust the fan to blow more or less. Changing the temperature makes the system work harder, reheating and then cooling the air, and that can waste gas too. If you have passengers in the back seat, don't hit the recirculate button. This just takes air from the front and pulls it back, so the air in the back of your car will be hot and stale. And if you have a car that automatically turns on and off at long lights, turn this feature off. When your engine shuts off, your AC compressor does too, making it work a lot harder in stop and go traffic. And then lastly, your cabin air filter, if you're getting um, routine maintenance and your oil changes and stuff your mechanic has probably changed that out for you but that's going to help your ac run better so change your cabin air filter um, when we are preparing for this segment you mentioned one that i had never heard about but a lot of people have apparently so so, so yeah as if it's really hot outside as we're about to be home um my husband makes us turn off everything in the car like the air and just mm -hmm. get hot He's mean. I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's like, this is going to make our AC last longer. But I only like to do it like as I'm pulling in the driveway. Uh -huh. but he likes to do it, you know, like two minutes out. Um, but you just turn it all off so the air conditioner is not running before uh -huh. you. Basically, you don't ever just turn off the car with the air conditioner going full blast. Is, is what, what he he's says. always said. And so he's I mean, always said because it's going to help your system last longer. Allegedly. Yeah. And, and so he's gotten you into the habit of doing this, and he does it, right? Yeah, and I do it, or I at least make sure it's off so he doesn't get in and realize I didn't do it. Yeah, so I said, oh, let me just run this past a mechanic, a repair person. And so I did ask the repair person that I go to and that we've used for a lot of stories, um, and he said, I have never heard of that before. Um, he's like, no, I don't, I don't think that's necessary. He's like, in today's heat, just do what you want to do. It is so hot. When you did some research, you found that – in older cars, like certainly that's something that people have said for a long time. Yeah. And that maybe it was true in like, you know, vehicles 20, 30 years ago or older. Yeah. I mean, I do remember my dad also doing something Saying like that. the same. Yeah. But, and it's, so just, maybe I mean, it's just something that kind of stuck. Maybe. Bottom line is it can't hurt, but he's to turn it off before you turn off your car. But he's, you know, the mechanic's like, but you don't have to do that. Um, we hope all of this has been very useful information for you. We will have some things in our show notes, everything we mentioned here, but also some things that we haven't mentioned here. Yeah, we found a cool a few cool things online, like the department, the Texas Department of Energy has a calculator where you can go in and put your appliance, put anything you're wondering, like, does this thing suck a lot of electricity? Uh -huh. You can put it in there and it'll tell you exactly how much electricity this item, appliance in your home uses so it could be a way to look around your own home and try to save money yeah like you were saying with kids home from school and you know you said you'll come home from work and like the kids are in there and like every light in the house is on and it's like i mean you know when it's adults you'd like to think that we're good at turning the light off or the fan off or whatever right. um, but also like energy suckers like so you use that calculator for things that you might not have considered that are plugged in that you don't even think they're using electricity because you're not actively using them but they could be taking up power and electricity. All right. Um, that is going to do it for this episode of Ask Amy. Make sure you go online and check out our show notes so you can get all of these details. There we're also including information for um, an energy sort of consultation that you can get from Reliant Energy. We had a viewer who emailed in and asked, hey, all of the retail electric providers used to come to your home and do home energy audits. They don't really do that anymore, but I reached out to some of the big ones, and Reliant Energy says that they will do a consultation. It is done um, online or via FaceTime, but they'll sort of look at your usage, look at, learn more about your appliances to tell you, give you some advice on maybe ways that you can save on your electricity. We're going to include that in the show notes as well. Thanks so much for coming on here with me today, Andrea. Yeah, of Andrea. course. I love it. All right, everybody, have a great week. <laughs>